Hi, welcome to the noise path. What you're looking at is a broken x-ray tube. It just came out of my x-ray machine, which you've probably seen on the channel before. Unfortunately, the x-ray tube died and it would just pull down the high voltage output of the power supply and it would produce no x-ray. I managed to find a replacement for it, so I thought it would be interesting to take this one apart. Now, it looks like it's molded, so we would have to just basically cut it out. Now, of course, there's glass inside at the bottom. Right here we have the beryllium window and you got to be careful with this because beryllium dust is quite harmful for your lungs and there's even a warning here on top of it. If you also remember from when I repaired my x-ray machine the first time on camera, it had this board in it and this board is that controls the focusing mechanism and some of the other deflection plates inside of the x-ray tube itself. So the high voltage input comes from here up to 35,000 volts for this particular tube and all the control lines are here. The heater is also coming from this and this is a silicone cable because these power supply modules go up to one and a half kilovolt. So this whole thing had to be replaced unfortunately but my x-ray machine is up and running but let's see if we can get inside of this. A nice feature of this particular tube was that it could create a really small x-ray focus point and that had a few advantages. First of all it would create a nice illumination plane and then you could elevate your sample and bring it closer to the opening of the x-ray tube and get magnification. Not to mention that the size of that spot will determine your ultimate resolution so I could get really nice sharp images and you could adjust that focusing by playing with some of the potentiometers in here and that would change the voltages and ultimately create the focus. And a few necessary points of warning, these tubes absolutely should not be energized outside of the x-ray machine without the x-ray machine having complete enclosure. Even if you're almost sure that it is broken, energizing this point with a high voltage power supply will create x-ray. And the x-ray will not just come out of this port, it will come out of other places from around it. And it has to be enclosed appropriately with a thick enough metal depending on the energy of the x-ray. So I would never power this on outside, I already know it is broken, so we're not going to play around with it beyond opening it. And of course with the glass and the beryllium and everything else, you're going to have to be very, very careful. Well, that was an ordeal. And I have to say, I only cried a few times, but I finally managed to get almost everything off the tube. And here's the x-ray tube now. It certainly lost a lot of weight and a lot of volume. Now the way this operates I described in a previous video, but now we can see the internal construction. It really is not magic. We're creating electrons, we're accelerating them and colliding them with the surface to create x-ray. Now on the left side, the heating element is probably inside of that cylinder. That's going to cause the temperature to rise and we're going to get thermionic emissions, we're going to get electrons leaving that and being accelerated toward this other plate. The high voltage input is connected over here, so this thing is sitting at a positive voltage and a very strong electric field between this side and this side of the tube causes the electrons to accelerate, the cathode and the anode of course. Now if you look carefully inside, you can also see that there are several plates in there and those are the focusing plates that you have to bias at several thousand volts and they're going to deflect the electron and focus them through that pinhole. You can see there's a tiny pinhole in there. It's hard to get this thing to actually focus on it. There's a hole in there in the middle of that plate and that's where the electrons are going to come in in a focused way. They're going to collide with that angle right there. Now that metal can be made of several different things. Tungsten is quite popular because of its high melting temperature. And so once you collide this, it's almost like hitting a ping pong ball on an angle surface. Electron accelerates, hits that, turns into x-ray and comes out of here and comes out of the beryllium window at the bottom, which is still intact. But that some of the x-rays is just going to scatter everywhere. So most of it is going to be guided down, but some of it would certainly leak outside from the other parts of it. Yeah, so that's why this actually works because of this strong electric field and the amount of energy we put into accelerating those electrons. But now we can see exactly what's going on inside. Now what's wrong with it? I'm not sure. It does rattle a little bit when I tap it. So maybe one of the plates is broken or something gets shorted. I'm not sure. But it looks really cool now that we can see inside of it. Now we can also turn on the heater and see it glow and this obviously does not produce any x-rays, it's no different than turning on an incandescent light bulb because we have no high voltage here to accelerate the electrons. But maybe if you peek through there we might be able to see it glow. Okay, let's go ahead and give it a try, turn it on, put an amp through it and then maybe it will glow, there it is, look at that. There we go, we can see it indeed glow in the background. Yeah, so the element is certainly working, the problem is something else that's causing the high voltage power supply to clamp down, but yeah pretty cool. And Pooch provided quite a bit of assistance during this entire procedure. And there you go, I hope you enjoyed looking inside one of these x-ray tubes. I'm going to keep this and see what else we can do with it in the future. I'll see you next time.